comes in. Good morning, everybody. My name is Paul Smith. Um, I'm with GE's Critical Power Division. At least that's the name over the door at the moment. Um, our history has been uh, fairly long and I won't say checkered because it's not really been checkered. Um, in the telecom power arena, um, we started off life as part of the AT&T power division, uh, building switch, switching um, power supplies for uh, central offices. Um, you may have seen us build as Tyco Electronics at one time. Uh, we certainly did that. Uh, we were lineage power for a fair amount of time as well. Um, and throughout this, uh, we're now part of, part of GE. Throughout this, we've been uh, dealing primarily with uh, 48 volt DC systems for telecom switches. Um, so the central office where um, the mantra has always been, you pick up the phone and there's always a dial tone. The lights may be out, uh, but there will be a dial tone. We like to think that's our fault. Um, we're going to talk this morning about um, an application for OCP um, in, the, in the data center for uh, OCP rack powering. And um, our particular slant on this is a proposal that we've, we've put together for, um, uh, for a contribution. And uh, it's going to look at a true three phase and, and the input range will be from 380 to 480 volts, uh, plus or minus a bit. Uh, and give you a 48 volt DC output. Um, it will give you a full 24 kilowatts. Uh, that's four modules, four six kilowatt modules. Uh, so depending on whether you want to provision with N plus one redundancy, you can call it 24 or you can call it 18 kilowatts in total. Um, the shelf is the two open rack units high. Um, it'll be fed with a 50 amp AC cord whip, which will plug into some sort of standard either some sort of standard receptacle um, or it can be blunt cut and you can connect it to a, to a terminal block. Um, one of the unique aspects of this is uh, using bus bar clips for the 48 volt output. Most of the uh, current shelves use bus bars which bolt to the, uh, to the rear bus bar. Um, we feel that uh, um, the clip technology is now sufficiently advanced that uh, that gives you a lot more flexibility. You can put the, put the power module anywhere in the rack. You're not limited to where the, uh, uh, the bus bar bolt, bolting apparatus is, uh, is provided. Uh, in terms of benefits, um, simple AC wiring, um, 480 volts, three phase is, is pretty ubiquitous. It's, uh, it's around all over the place. There are UPSs should you want to uh, to do backup that way that provide 480 volt three phase. But really the, uh, the 480 volt three phase is a good way of getting power from the service entrance panel to the remote location where you need to use it uh, with minimum losses. Um, you'll be seeing some other approaches using 400 volts or 380 volts DC to reduce losses in that transmission path. Um, in practice, uh, three, three phase high voltage AC like this has the same benefits because you don't, you, you don't incur the same losses as you would with lower voltages. Either, either the losses are lower or you're paying more for copper cables with the, with the lower voltages. Um, that AC infrastructure is, is already there in a, lot of, in a lot of buildings. It doesn't have to be added as something special. Um, so that's a, another, another advantage. Um, it also gives you automatic phase balance. If you're powering systems off of individual phases, single phase power supplies, at some point you have to worry about whether you're using power from all three phases that come into the building equally. Um, because if you don't, you'll over, overpower one of those, one of those um, phases, especially if you're using a UPS, but uh, it, it matters no matter what you're using. Um, with a three-phase system, it draws powers off, power off of all three phases equally, and, um, and you don't have to worry about uh, phase balancing. Um, it can go anywhere in the, uh, in the rack, as I mentioned, because of the, uh, the clip technology. Um, 
And we're also providing um, a controller which will uh, will talk to anything else in the in the in the building in terms of building control or or power control uh, through an Ethernet protocol. Um, we're actually working with the uh, the protocol um, group as well to look at other other options for uh, for communications. Um, this is a, an, an inspired submission um, put through the um, uh, the Web Foundation contribution license. And this is what it looks like. Um, you can see here we've got uh, four plug-in modules. Um, there are screw uh, screw retainers to, to keep them in place, but uh, the shelf itself can be installed uh, with minimal effort without the rectifiers in. If you put the rectifiers in first, it's pretty heavy, um, but, uh, but the shelf itself is, is pretty easy to install. And the fact that it clips in rather than bolts in um, helps that as well, of course. From the front, you see on the left, there's the, uh, the, the controller in the top, le top left slot. Um, below that is the uh, communications port. Uh, there are actually two, so uh, two ports there. One is for Ethernet communications, and the second is what we call a multi-shelf interconnect. This is so that should you have need for more than 24 kilowatts in a rack, you can put in a second rack, and the two racks will, will talk to each other and share power correctly between all of the, the rectifiers in two racks. Um, in theory, you can add more. Um, but uh, we don't anticipate people wanting more than two racks at, uh, at this point. On the back view, um, not a very good photograph here. I, for some reason, I forgot to take good pictures of the, of the back of the unit, but there's not much on the back. Um, there's, a, there's a strain relieved uh, AC input cable at the bottom there. Uh, it's inset a little bit into the back of the, uh, of the module so that uh, the bend radius doesn't have to be excessive to bring it up to the, uh, to the top of the rack. And then there are those two um, connector clips, one above the other, that uh, plug onto the, uh, to the bus bar. In terms of a, a block diagram, um, you've got the, the Ethernet connector on one side. Um, the, the system controller, which is just a microprocessor controller that talks to the rectifiers, as well as talking to the, uh, to the Ethernet external. Um, four rectifiers plug in. They're obviously uh, field replaceable units. They're, uh, uh, they're hot swappable. Um, the, uh, the controller um, knows how many modules there are there so that you can interrogate the, module, uh, the controller for, uh, for capacity, as well as, um, as, well as health. Uh, and then on the back side, three phases, uh, four wires, uh, three individual phase wires, and uh, uh, non-current carrying ground coming in there um, in, that, uh, in that whip cord. Um, in terms of the OCP tenants, we've tried to address each of these, efficiency, scale, openness, and, and impact. Uh, from the standpoint of efficiency, um, the AC distribution efficiency comes into play here and, and we estimate that there's probably a 1% to 2% improvement over a single phase uh, distribution system um, in total in the, in the AC distribution, which offsets the fact that uh, a three phase rectifier is inherently just a little bit less efficient than a, than a single phase rectifier. Um, the higher input voltage helps, but the three phase um, conversion doesn't, uh, doesn't work in your favor. But we still achieve um, 97 point something percent efficiency in the actual rectifier itself. Um, and then the DC distribution efficiency, obviously 48 volt, if you compare it with 12 volt, the lo losses are lower and the ease of providing battery backup is, uh, is improved as well. We did some, some studies a while back on, um, on where that uh, AC distribution loss uh, occurs and compared for a different, uh, different rectifier styles uh, in terms of the three phase uh, 480 volt, the three phase 208 volt, and a single phase 208 volts. And you can see that uh, there's a considerable uh, improvement in, in distribution efficiency. The losses are significantly lower in a three phase uh, distribution system. 
Um, compatibility, uh, it's, it's obviously uh, designed around uh, the open compute uh, physical dimensions. It uh, fits in the, fits in the, uh, the short 48 volt uh, rack um, with the associated uh, UL listings and, um, and dimensional compatibilities. Um, it's designed currently to, uh, to fit with the width and the fastenings of the open rack 2.0. Um, in terms of compatibility, um, looking in the in the uh, in from the front, we've got the the two diagrams that we saw saw before. Obviously, it's compatible with the um, with the 48 volt um, requirements of this of the system, as well as the uh, the 480 volts uh, AC input. Um, the DC output parameters are consistent with open rack standard V2, uh, as are thermal design requirements. Um, when you get high efficiency rectifiers, the thermal output of a, of a system like this is uh, obviously the higher the efficiency, the lower the thermal, thermal output, so it's not, not too difficult to meet that. And then the, the I.O. system, Ethernet, consistent with the hardware management project, which uh, we're getting involved with to make sure that uh, we keep up with uh, changes that may be going on there. In terms of scale, um, it can be mounted anywhere in the rack. You can, you can add rectifiers. You don't have to put in all four, four rectifiers if you don't need the full 24 kilowatts. Don't have to pay for that up front if you uh, subsequently find you need more. You just plug in more, uh, more rectifiers. Um, and as I say, they're, uh, they're plug and play. If you, if you have a failed rectifier, it will get reported. You can unplug the failed one, um, identified by the lights. Uh, typically in the telecom world, red is a failure and green is good, and that's typically the way our rectifiers work, although we're obviously looking at the, uh, uh, the, the Facebook uh, specification using blue indicators for uh, colorblind recognition. Um, but uh, LED indicators are a standard part of those, those re rectifiers. Um, it's not necessary to uh, dedicate a position for power. Uh, you can add a second rack if you need to, um, just that uh, interconnect between the two racks to ensure uh, proper current sharing between all the rectifiers. Um, openness, uh, we've, we've submitted this as a, as a, as a contribution. Um, it's uh, the spec we've submitted for 380 to 480 volt three phase. Um, we will have the 3D CAD model for the external envelope. Um, we're not planning to open up the electronics parts of the rectifiers. That's a little bit uh, difficult to do in the current, current environment. Um, uh, in the future, we're, we're looking for a for a compliant product uh, in, the, in the future. Um, in terms of communications with the rest of the, of the systems, um, SNMP is, is standard and built into our, into our system for communications, um, as well as uh, some of these other, um, other uh, protocols. Um, Mark Johnson is here. He can talk a little bit about that if you have questions on the protocols that we're going to, uh, to look at. Um, but basically, we're going to allow access to system data, system control, be able to set the, uh, the voltage. And we're looking very closely at how the uh, intercommunications between this module and um, a battery module uh, will, uh, will play. Uh, obviously, that's a key part of the functionality. Um, we're also looking at probably a contribution on a, on a battery module that uh, we've got developed for another application. Uh, individual rectifier data, um, any alarms that are generated by the system, uh, over voltage, under voltage, uh, excess current, all those sort of general alarms. Rectifier failure, we have numerous ways of detecting uh, rectifier failures. Um, in terms of the system data that's, a volta that's uh, available through the, through the interface, the usual voltage, current, temperature, um, part numbers, all that sort of thing will be available through that, uh, uh, through that interface. System control, 
restart emergency power off, uninstall missing equipment. If you take something out, it, uh, it gets taken. It, it doesn't get taken out of, the, uh, uh, out of the inventory in the controller unless you say, yes, I want it taken out of the uh, inventory. Um, product codes and rectifier from the rectifier data, individual AC voltages, DC voltages for each individual rectifier, software revisions, that sort of thing. Um, alarms, you know, there, there's kind of no end to the number of alarms you can generate if you want them. Uh, most people just want uh, good or bad, so you know that's the that's the basics. Uh, but it can be anywhere from there to uh, every, every single thing that you that you see listed there. In terms of impact, um, the installation in in brownfield applications is is pretty it's pretty straightforward. It fits within the larger community, um, and it will f effectively extend the 48 volt uh, user base in the in the market. And it certainly is uh, a simplification to some of the uh, uh, to the, some of the power powering schemes that exist. In terms of uh, impact, order of parts, um, we've set up a number of parts here. One for the rectifier shelf itself. Uh, the controller and the individual rectifiers have uh, all orderable items um, and can be available for, for use. Um, and that's an overview of the, uh, of the shelf. We're happy to, uh, to look at uh, questions. Uh, my colleague uh, Ed is over here to support me and as I mentioned Mark is here to talk about uh, uh, communications if that's uh, an issue because that's not my area of expertise. <laughs> Any questions? Good morning. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Morning. Um, just a couple quick questions. Is uh, in your technology is this are, is this silicon base or, or are you using wide band gap technology within the uh, within the power supply? Um, I don't know, Ed. <laughs> it's silicon. I, I, yeah, silicon or silica, silicon carbide. I think is used in some of the some of the devices, but uh, it's silicon based. Yeah. And how important in the future is, is it for you guys to increase your efficiency over the 97? Well, we're always striving to improve efficiency. Um, once you get above 97, there's a certain amount of diminishing returns. Um, when you look at the, the energy that you're trying to save, you, it's, it's fractional uh, in terms of the heat generated. Um, yes, we're, we're still striving for, for better, but it always comes at a cost. And uh, I know this industry is very cost sensitive, so you know, there'll, be a, there'll be a balance between uh, energy and energy savings and, and cost. When it really comes down to saving energy within the total building, the rectifier is not the culprit. <laughs> and just one last question. Are these 1,200 volt devices in there? Um, the, the topology is set up to use standard um, off-the-shelf 600-volt um, FETs. Okay. It is a platform product. Um, we sell it in derivatives all over the place. And so we have standard programs where we fold in efficiency improvement over time. Okay. And so it's not a one and done, this is it, it'll never get better. It's a part of our um, product line and we'll continue to make it better um, over time. Okay, great. The reason why I ask, I'm from transform and we do gallium nitride uh, power switches. Thanks. Hi, I have a question more related to the controller. Um, I noticed you mentioned about the software revisions in the, in, the <clears throat> in the data that you can get from the ethernet port. Yep. So I'm assuming the firmware is updatable on the field? Yes. Um, does that require any downtime from the rectifier itself? No, absolutely not. The, uh, the rectifiers are set up so that they will work. You can unplug the, the, uh, the controller is a field replaceable unit as well. And you can unplug it and the, the shelf will continue to produce power exactly the same as it, as it always has. The only detriment will be that it may not share power between the individual modules quite as well. Uh, current sharing is degraded very slightly. Not enough to affect operation though. Um, each of the modules continues to work at its most recent set point. If it loses, con um, loses communications with the controller, it continues to operate at that last set point. So no, it, it's not a, not a problem with um, uh, operation.
okay, while excellent. you do upgrades or replace the controller or whatever. Mm -hmm. so. The one last question regarding the firmware update itself. Um, do you guys use the Cerberus to authenticate the new firmware when it comes in, or is that something that's not yet defined there? We, we don't use that, no. We typically don't have done that through the controller offline. We don't do it um, remotely, although it can be done, can be done remotely. Um, do we have any other Thank you. issues on that, Mark? No, it's the first time we've heard about it. Right. We have, we have to look at Cerberus to see what's here. Um, so I had two questions. My first question was when you talked about pairing like two racks together and connecting them current wise, if you wanted to have like instead of a 48 kilowatt rack, like a 36 kilowatt rack, how would you recommend setting up the rectifiers in that case? Would it be like three and three, four and two? It really doesn't matter because they'll all be under the control of the, of the primary shelf. You wouldn't have a controller in the secondary shelf. Uh, so they'd all be acting just like the uh, just like the rectifiers in the primary shelf. Um, the only reason for splitting them might be power balance within the bus bar in the back of the rack. So it may be better to put three, you know, cut, try and keep them equal. If it, but again, it depends where you put it in the rack. Um, if you one at the top, one at the bottom, then you'd probably want to have them split fairly evenly if you're not fully populating them. Yeah. Um, and then my second question was, um, on your fault alerts, one of the ones I noticed there was incompatible rectifier type. And so I wondered, this whole presentation was about a six kilowatt rectifier. Do you have like a form fit compatible other size rectifier, like three kilowatts or two kilowatts? In this form factor, no. Um, we have others um, in, in other applications. We have some 24 and 48 volt rectifiers which are physically the same form factor. Uh, and if you were plugging one of those into the others, that's exactly the alarm that you would, you would see. Uh, there are no others which would physically f connect into this module, into this shelf at the current time. Although I certainly wouldn't rule that out because we, as market requires, we're likely to develop other other products, yeah. Thank you. Same way that uh, 48 volts has, uh, has come along to reduce the current seen in 12 volt systems, um, if I had to make a prediction, um, then maybe at some point we'll look at 125 volt systems to, uh, to supersede 48 volt systems to reduce the current yet further. But you start running into safety issues there. 48 volts is nice because it's, uh, it's touch safe. So uh, all those products are uh, currently available for ordering already? They are set up in our system to order. Um, we have a sample of the, uh, of the shelf populated with rectifiers and, uh, and controller, uh, but it is numero uno. It's, it's the first one of its, of its type. So if you were to place an order right now, we could accept an order. It would have a fairly long lead time. Um, but uh, we've, we're in the process of demonstrating uh, that physical sample. And, nice lead in, uh, that physical sample is actually on uh, booth B2, which is, at B2 or B1? B1, which is the Rat Rattel booth, and if you'd like to see it, we can uh, show you the physical uh, first unit that we've, that we've produced. Yeah, so maybe we can discuss further on um, uh, offline, but we are quite interested in expanding your uh, design to um, on, on other profiles. For example, uh, for us, for Penguin, we use 208, 277, and uh, 230, and uh, we we'll also need more than one um, DC bus bar clips. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. Happy to talk about if it. If you yeah. guys go on the design, maybe we can discuss further about those customization. Absolutely. Yep. Any other questions?